Hello, my name is Josje. In this video I will show you how to make these gluing jigs. I have this gluing jig which I made myself a few years ago. And it's from, made from very thin MDF and some spare bits of wood. And it's fine. Uh, it works. It's square and um, you can make a similar one. But it's not very deep. And the same with this one from Templewood Miniatures. It's a very nice one. It's made of Perspex. And uh, it's got a ruler and everything. But again, it's not very deep. So it's, it's somewhat limited. And then this one is a favorite of mine. It's from Smaller Than Life from the USA. And I would like to have a bigger one. And they have them, but they're quite expensive to ship down uh, up here to the Netherlands. So I decided to make my own. And I was giving myself a bit of a challenge because what I really wanted to do was use only materials I already had in my workshop. And these are the materials and tools I used. I have this laminated chipboard, which I think was part of my old wardrobe, but it got water damage, as you can see. Uh, but this, this part is still good. So I'm going to use this as my material for my gluing jig. And I've already cut it down to manageable sizes. And this part is going to be the bottom of my gluing jig. And now I need to cut two strips for the sides. Like this. This one's slightly too short. But like that. And one on this side. So I'll go and cut them now. Um, this is the piece I'll be using to uh, create this long side and I would like it to be around five centimeters high and the um, chipboard is around 1.6 centimeters or 16 millimeters so well I don't know seven and um, this is just to give the saw a guide oh, broke my pencil there we go so I'll cut that and then I'll need another piece for the short side. So I've cut these two and this one is already the perfect size, which is lucky. <laughs> and then I still have to measure the length of this one. Um, so I'll just check that. And that is here. So I'll have to cut that. So there we are. Good. Now I will drill some holes because I will um, screw it and uh, glue it as well. So uh, measure the So I'll have to drill in here. And now something I often do wrong because it's mirrored. So the, the other screws have to be on this side. And if you flip it over, <laughs> this side will move to the other side. I do that a lot. I don't know why. I just do. And I know that I'm doing it wrong and I still do it. So it has to be here. And this is also fine, you know, it's just a guide so I know I'll drill a hole there, drill a hole there, here, something like that. That will be sharp, uh, strong, plenty strong. And then same goes for this one, line on the bottom so I know. That doesn't matter because you just, you know, flip it back and forth. But it's a silly mistake and I, I I keep doing it. I don't know. And I know I'm doing it and I still do it. So 
let me get my drill. But first I have to find some screws and I already saw that I don't have the right ones in my stash. Um, but I do have a few down here in my leftover. And these are just long enough um, to go in and to grip the other side. And I'll I'll countersink them a little bit so they, you know, go in a little bit deeper. So there. Um, I have a drill which is the right size actually in my Dremel, which is not perfect, but it's faster, so I don't have to switch them out. <laughs> and I will countersink them as well. Like that and like that. Then before I glue them, uh, I, because it's a laminate, I like to score the the surface so the glue will have a better grip. And I'm I'm using wood glue and it's fine and I'm screwing it as well. So, but this just helps it. And I'll degrease it as well, clean it up. Now I will get a few of my screws in, which is always helpful. The glue. I'll glue both sides. So this side, the laminated side and the chipboard side. Check if there's any glue coming out on the inside. I want to remove that. I will also check if it's actually square because now I can still pull it apart. Sorry. Oh, very nice. Perfect. I will leave that to dry and um, then we'll have a gluing jig. The glue is now dry and 
This is my finished gluing jig, the bigger one. Um, this one is around 18 by 29 and a half centimeters. And the height is almost five or a little over five centimeters. And the important thing, it doesn't matter how big it is, it's whatever size you like. The important thing is that it is a flat surface and that that is a nice straight angle. That's the important thing. It doesn't matter how high the sides are or how big your surface is. That's up to you what's convenient for you. I made another one before <laughs> this one and um, a smaller one. And I used, I, this is, has a magnetic surface, which is very handy um, because you can sort of, well not clamp, but you can push the magnets up to your work and help it to glue, just to glue to set nice and strong. For the magnetic surface, I used actually um, this, the lid of a pencil box, a bigger one but it was a similar one. I used the metal pencil case because I wanted to use materials I already have in my workshop, like the chipboard here. And the metal pencil case was uh, one of the magnetic surfaces I could find. And that's what I wanted to use. And I, I thought it would be nice to show you how easy it was to use something like that. And I thought it would be easy to cut with a hobby knife, which it was not. Uh, it can be done uh, if you go over it many, many times with a knife, but it's difficult and it gets really sharp, so you have to be very careful. And I cut it with my table saw, actually, which was much easier. That was a quick compilation of how I made the magnetic gluing jig and the base is made the same way as a larger gluing jig and the only difference is that I glued this metal sheet on there uh, and I used um, an adhesive called Bison Kit and it's a contact adhesive. I hope this was helpful and that you're inspired to make your own gluing jig. Thank you for watching. Have fun!